Hi there, my name is Toya C and I'd like to welcome you to Do It In God. If this is your first time swinging by this space in the YouTube verse, well, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I do post more content on all things on the Christian faith and how to navigate being a Christian into this world. All right, so let's get right into today's video. So today's video is inspired by what I learned while assembling my daughter's um, basketball hoop. Yes. So we, my, I have a two year old daughter, Noel, and of course she's getting to that age now where she's really, really curious about her environment. So for Christmas, my husband and I decided to get her a little mini basketball hoop, um, just to kind of help her with her coordination and things like that. And as you guys know, Christmas was what, over a month ago, right? And that thing is still sitting right there in my living room, just occupying space or was until yesterday. And so yesterday I decided to, you know, put it together and, in that moment of me doing that, God taught me two different things. Yes. So this video actually is going to be a two part series because <laughs> I don't want to bore you guys with a long winded video. Um, so I'm going to split it into two. I'm going to post one today, which is the one you're watching right now. And I'll be posting the part two later on in the week. So the first thing that I learned um, from this experience was the dangers of procrastination. Mm hmm. The dangers of procrastination. A lot of us might not be parents. Some of us might not have been in the situation that I was in assembling a basketball hoop. However, I think every single one of us can relate when it comes to the word procrastination. At some point in our lives, we've all kind of procrastinated on, on one or two things that we knew we should have gotten done earlier, right? Let's confess, we are not angels. <laughs> but as much as, you know, I've always realized that procrastination was not necessarily a good thing, I never understood how dangerous it was or how much of a negative impact it can have on our lives until I got more insight during this encounter yesterday. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys. If that is something that you're interested in hearing about, I encourage you to stay tuned. Let's go. Okay. So back to the basketball hoop, as I mentioned earlier, we bought this gift for Noel over four and a half weeks ago for Christmas. And it's been sitting in my living room space, well, closer to my dining area, just occupying space in the little big old brown box that it's been in. As a matter of fact, I don't even think the person that owned the gift knew what was inside. And neither did Shiloh, my older daughter, because if she did, I'm sure she would have forced me to assemble it earlier because she likes to go to her sister's toys. But anyway, that had been there for four weeks. Okay, going on five. And if I'm being honest with you guys, yes, life is busy. Yes, I have a lot on my plate, but I literally would sit at basketball post every single day. Either while cooking dinner from across the room or just walking by to head into my hallway to head to run a few errands, whatever. I kept on seeing that box and it was literally coming to my remembrance. You need to assemble this box. You need to assemble this box. And I made the decision, the conscious decision to keep looking away. That's just a reality. I cannot blame it on anybody. I can't say that, oh, I forgot. I can't make excuses. There are no excuses. I chose to look away. And, you know, while I was assembling it yesterday, what God was revealing to me was this thing literally was an eyesore to your living area. For those that don't know, as I mentioned in my first video of the year, we just went into a new property. So we're finally getting settled in. And my living room dining area is one place that I got done first. And it's looking so nice. And I'm so happy. And you will think that after all the work I had put in to set that place up, that I'll be more conscious of getting it, you know, trashed for the lack of words. And there's this big black brown box just leaning against my accent wall, making my place look like, for the lack of words, a dumpster. And I chose to do nothing about it for four weeks. And what this made me realize was this. This was a gift that I gave to this girl, right? And I failed to put the gift into use. And it just kept on occupying space. And as beautiful as the gift was, and as much as that gift could have added value to Noah's life, or could add value and is now adding value because she's been loving it since yesterday, in me failing to utilize that gift or at least set it up to where it can be used, I pretty much devalued that gift. You know, I wrote something in my notebook while I was just meditating on what I experienced yesterday. And here it goes. Pretty much in essence, when we fail to use our gifts, we lose time that we can't get back. That's number one. And we also risk not only having our gifts being dormant, 
but also having that particular gift be a nuisance in the environment where it should not be. Mm. So pretty much this basketball hoop that could have been a very, very valuable thing was actually a nuisance. Just a little, well not a little, a big old box just sitting in my living area. Simply because I failed to use it as it was supposed to be used. And it got me wondering, how many gifts has God placed in us? How many dreams has God placed in you that he's been nudging you to just move on and use and for whatever reason you just procrastinating on it thinking tomorrow is another day for you to get it done when in reality you don't know if you have tomorrow that's number one number two you don't know if that gift is going to be as valuable for tomorrow i'm a strong believer in seasons and being conscious of the urgency in those seasons right you know one would think of for example where i come from i'm nigerian i'm nigerian american and i remember my mom used to tell me so many stories in the past of how once upon a time, yes, legit, this is a legit story, Google it. Once upon a time, the Naira, which is a Nigerian currency, was the number two in the world after the British pound, even of a higher value than the dollar bill. Now, fast forward to 2022, a Naira or a dollar is equivalent to about, I think, 500 Naira. That's how much that value is depreciated right over time due to mismanagement and things like that but i say all this to say that now imagine if i had one naira from 1960 or 1970 or whenever this money or this currency had such value and i decide to just take it and just hide it away and procrastinate on investing that money and fast forward to 2022 i take that money out of wherever i had it be in the bank account or in my closet and i say yeah i'm rich i got money am i not really, right? Exactly. It's the same thing with our gifts because there are seasons and times as to when God wants us to explore different gifts that he's given unto us. And if we miss out on those seasons, it's very dangerous that we might not necessarily get to experience the full essence or the full value in that gift because we wasted too much time. Another thing I want to you know, identify or another thing that I learned from this experience was that nudge or, or, or that call to do that thing, and you know what that thing is for you, is a priority. Make it one. You're busy. Yes, you are busy. Life is busy. But that thing that God is calling you to do, or that, that, that task that you know you need to get done, is just as important. You know, I kept telling myself that, yes, this is important for me to get done for Noel, but there are other priorities, right? Mom life. Who can relate? Life is not easy. Mom life work life, career mom, wife, all that, businesswoman. And don't get me wrong, those are all obligations that I, I, I definitely knew that I had to get done. However, this task of assembling this basketball hoop only took me about 10 minutes, y'all. 10 minutes. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I know that as busy as I am, I still have time to spend about 10, 15 minutes on YouTube, right? On Netflix. I, I, I've been binging a little bit. So in essence, it's not that I didn't have time. It's just, it's just that I chose not to make time. And sometimes, not in this particular case, because I was very confident about this particular exercise of assembling this basketball hoop, but if I also want to take it a step further and be honest and transparent with you guys, like I try to be, sometimes I procrastinate on certain things, especially even with the Tom Shop. For those that have been following me, I have a, a, a store called the Tom Shop. And listen, I'm looking across the room right now, and there's so many items that I have for the Tom Shop that I've not even posted on my site. Because one, I'm afraid. Yes, I mentioned it, right? I'm, God is working and dealing with me on that. I told you guys I'm not perfect. I'm on the journey and I'm carrying you along with me. I'm afraid of what, you know, how people are going to receive it. I'm afraid of whether it's going to sell or not. Um, also, I'm a perfectionist, right? I want things to be done a certain way and I want it to be perfect. And so packaging and all this stuff, I'm trying to like make sure it's perfect. But what I'm realizing is the more and more I hold on to these things, again, by the time... I'm, I think I'm ready to push it forward. It might be out of season. Currently right now is winter. By February, March, it's going to be spring. And most of these items are winter items. Go figure, right? So yes, procrastination can be triggered by a lot of things. Sometimes it is just laziness. Let's just keep it real. And if that's what you're struggling with, I just want to just drop this scripture right now for you on the screen where the scripture talks about how an idle mind is an instrument of the devil or an idle mind is a devil's workshop, right? When you choose to just, or for whatever reason, you choose to be idle and you're not exercising your mind, 
guess what? Your mind is still going to be put to work. It's just not going to be working for you or for the kingdom. The enemy is going to be planting more t thoughts into your mind. It's going to be the dumb ground for the enemy to begin to plant thoughts that are going to edify you, are not going to equip you to do the work you've been called to do, are not going to, you know, even encourage you to keep pressing in and to be positive and to stay grounded in God. So it's very, very important that you also guard yourself. And, and, and even when you have those days, maybe when you're feeling depressed, like I've been feeling the past couple of months, like I shared with you guys, a year, almost a year now, push yourself and get out of that com comfort zone. Don't stay on that mattress for too long. Don't procrastinate on your life because you never know what tomorrow may bring. Lastly, before I wrap up, I also want to say that while the topic of this video is about talking about the danger, the danger of procrastination, I don't want this video to make you afraid. You know, the scripture talks about God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but he's giving the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind, right? So this is not for you to be afraid. Um, of course, I have the fear of God in you, which is a total difference. And if you're wondering what that is or how that is different, I posted a video, I think two, three years ago on that. It just came up on your screen. Feel free to watch it um, or what it really means to fear God. Um, but generally, do not be afraid. Um, this is a vi this, this video, the purpose of this video is to bring something back to your remembrance and to just, I guess encourage you to just pick yourself up and do that thing because God is waiting on you and God desires for you to live a fulfilled and purposeful life. It's not for you to feel bad. Whatever you've done in the past, it's okay. Let it go. My four weeks of not assembling that basketball hoop is gone. However, at least I finally did it right. And now my daughter is using it. And it's adding value. So it's better late than never pick yourself up. And God is, God is faithful. So faithful to where if he sees us being diligent about being serious, eventually you there's no limit to what he can still do through and in us. So I hope that is, I hope you got the memo. I hope you're not discouraged. I hope you're not fearful. Go forth and do what God has called you to do. I'm going to end the video with a scripture from the book of John chapter nine, verse four, where Jesus says, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me, not his coming when no man can work. The new living translation of this scripture says we must quickly, quickly, carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. So pretty much we cannot afford to procrastinate. Irrespective of what is driving that procrastination, whether it's fear, whether it's laziness, whether it's perfectionism, right? We cannot afford to continue to wait because night is coming. And it's daytime and it's now, the time is now for us to get to work. So get up, get going, purpose is calling. That thing that God has told you to do, that particular thing has been given unto you because you are able to do it. God has already deposited what you need to use to do that thing. All he's waiting for you to do is just for you to just activate and utilize it. And you'll be surprised how much you would surprise yourself because you would learn, you would realize how much you are capable of. All right, that's the end of the video, guys. Like I always tell you guys, I mean, I have all the answers. I mean, I know it all, but I am glad I know the one that does, and that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. If this video has blessed you, don't just like it. Don't just comment, which I want you to do, okay? Because some of y'all be liking it, but don't be commenting. Leave me a comment below. Help me with the analytics. As you know, I've been rusty for two years, so I need to kind of get back into the groove of things. And if you guys are not telling YouTube that this video is adding value to your life, you know, by engaging with the video that I'm not going to get as much you know, exposure out there for others to get, um, I guess, impacted by the word as well. So make sure you do those two things, but also make sure you share with a friend if this is something that you know encouraged you or inspired you today. All right, I'm going to wrap up now. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you for joining in today on Do It In God. And until next time, blessings and love. Bye-bye.